Hi kids, me again, October. Mm, I love October, it's a good month. It's finally cooled off here in Dallas, Texas. It's no longer 147 degrees in the afternoon. Now it's only, you know, 90, which is good, you know. Um, anyways, good to be with you guys. Uh, here we are, lesson number eight in our video tutorial service. I had to remember the name there for a minute. That's crazy of me, I forgot the name of my own service. Anyhow, uh, we're going to go into some other things about time this month. In particular, we're going to talk about stuff like offsets and um, how to get things to arrive at a different time. Uh, offsets are pretty important for loosening up the animation. So we're going to look at some things there. We're also going to look at um, a little bit more in a discussion about anticipations, about how we can use uh, something I, I call micro-anticipations to kind of add a little extra pop to your motion. And um, anyways, that's, that's the stuff we're going to cover. So... Without any further delay, let's get into the good stuff. Okay, offsets. What is an offset? What am I talking about here? Well, it's a real simple thing. Basically, you offset the timing of different parts of the body in order to loosen up a bit of animation. One of the pluses of pose-based animation or you know, pose-based procedured animation, where pose, 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 is that it's very orderly, it's very organized, it's easy to change pretty quickly. Um, you can block out a whole bunch of footage with relatively few drawings. Um, or a few key poses, if you want to call them that. And if you need to change stuff, you'll need to change those, those images or those frames. You don't need to worry about all the stuff in between. If you get a completely new blocking notes or completely different feedback on, you know, from the director who says, yeah, I like this part in the front. I like that part in the back. But right here in the middle, I don't like what's going on with that move. Well, it's easy to fix because you only got to worry about one, two, three, four, maybe five or six different little frames in there to, to change the poses to get a different kind of thing going. But then comes the, the difficulty of actually making that stuff flow because I think we've all seen and perhaps in our day done, you know, animation where we, the pose and we hit the pose and everything always hits the same frame and then we're making sure that everything, it just feels like it's uh, always on a pose. And that's just not generally what we like to call good animation. Um, we like to call it kind of, Mm, not so good animation. And I've done plenty of that. Don't, don't, hey man, I used to have crap on my website that was ugh, not good because it didn't. Ha I didn't have a, a sense of understanding of just how the energies would work with things. But I've since matured and gotten slightly more educated. Okay, well, pff, no, somebody slapped me upside the head and said, hey dummy, don't do it that way. It looks like crap. So anyways, offsets. You try and find different parts of the body to give a sense of weight or a flow or you just don't want everything arriving at the same time when your character moves because it just hits and sticks and dies. Um, I, whenever I'm talking with other animators about this, a lot of times I'll say, well, it's like herding sheep. You're never going to get all the sheep to the place at the exact same moment. And it's actually not very natural anyways. Um, some will get there first, and other ones will kind of, the majority of them will show up, and then there's will be a few stragglers. Or like herding kids through a department store. You know, you got a, a class of 20 kindergartners, you're going to go to the second floor of the toy department in the, in the department store, and as soon as you walk in the store, there's going to be a couple of them that are just going to book to the escalator and stay there. And then the main group will come, and then there will be a few kids dawdling along, you know, maybe some of the pervert boys looking out the ladies' underwear section in the back. Anyways, the story is that not everything has to arrive at the same time, and in fact, it's not good if they do. Um, in fact, our roadways are designed not to have everything arrive at the same time. You try and evacuate a city of four million people from a hurricane and everybody hits the road at the same time and suddenly you can't go anywhere. So natural flow tells us that we don't want everything to just always, eh, you know, we don't want this to hit at the same time as this. We don't want this. We want this. You know what I mean? A great example, if you're going to look for... Uh, situations uh go ahead and rent if you don't own treasure planet it's not a great movie i mean eh, it's okay but the introduction se sequence with uh, john silver you know mr arrow and john hawkins and all those guys come down the stairs and there's the mysterious john silver over in the corner and this is animated by glenn Keane and some some of his cronies good guys uh they really know what they're doing you take a look at there's a there's a one scene where 
where Silver sticks his hand out for Jim to shake it, and it's it's his cyborg hand, and it's got like all knives and stuff, and it's really, and he kind of he's playing a joke on the kid. So, anyways, you take you watch that, and there's this sense where the the hand hits first, and the body eases in, and then there's another time where the where he switches it over and he offers it again. So he, he offers a hand, it's all knives and stuff, and Hawkins just kind of looks at it like, you want me to shake your knives? And so John Silver's all chuckle, chuckle, and he brings it back, and he switches all the knives over to his mechanical fingers, and then he offers the hands again. Well, watch that scene, and watch how Keen is playing with the emphasis. The whole thing is about the, the empty space between the characters. Now, I'd love to show it. Copyright rules tell me I can't. I wish I could, but I can't. So I have to describe it to you in the hope that when you go rent it and, and find that scene, you'll understand what I'm talking about. So further on, it's, it's a scene where two characters, okay? You've got Silver and you've got Hawkins and there's this empty space in between them. And in that empty space of the staging is where Silver's hand is going. And we want our eyes to be fixed there, but we also want Silver to feel a sense of, he's a big, big, powerful character, so we want a sense of that weight and that power. And Keen does such a great job of getting the hand out there quickly and then letting the body just kind of settle in with that weight behind it. So there's that great sense like, this is arriving soon, but all this stuff comes later. And you, you can't build that by offsetting keys. You can't just, like if you're in CG, you can't just go build those you know this this pose and then this pose and then offset the keys of the hand and then offset it's just not going to work you have to build that understanding the mechanics of it and what we're going to do in a little bit i'm going to show you what i'm talking about by like building thinking through the motions a little bit more in your poses don't just go with a pose or break down on a pose and think you can shift some keys and make it work all the time it will work some of the time and depending on the, ty the type of move, but you're also going to find that you're going to get some weird things because the computer is not too smart. In fact, the computer is pretty dumb. It doesn't, all it's going to do is say, oh, you have Z rotation value one and Z rotation value two. The shortest path between them is this, and I'm going to do that. And if you don't, if you're not careful, if you tell it to go from one to seven to two, it's going to go, okay, I'll go one to seven to two. And, it, and you might get some weird stuff. And we're going to show you that in a little bit when I get on the computer. Anyhow, I wanted to make sure that we, we, we get an understanding that if you're really looking for ways to loosen up that sticky stuff, you know, if, you're, if your animation is feeling really posy and really kind of like it just hits and dies, and that happens a lot. I mean, there's a lot of stuff, 10 Second Club, a lot of student work. And hey, that's fine. We all go through it. I went through it. Everybody goes through it. Where you hit something and you're like, why, why, does, that, why does that not work? Why does that not feel good? And the reason why it doesn't feel good is, is because you're trying to stick too much to the organization. And you're not letting the body flow. You're not letting a sense of, of rhythm happen. And here's the other part of offsets. Think about what you want to emphasize and make a contrast in how things move. Going back to the silver instance uh, in Treasure Planet, Keen wanted to emphasize the hand. He wanted the cyborg hand to be the star of the scene. But he also wanted to give a sense of weight to silver. But the hand was the lead, that was it. I mean, Hawkins animation is nothing, it's an eye shift. There's nothing going on there. So it's all about the hand. And so Hawkins is not moving at all. Silver's body is moving slow, but way too, you know, it's got some weight to it. So what's the contrast? The hand is snappier. So that's what Keen did, is he said the hand is going to be contrasted to everything else. It's going to be snappier, and its, it's timing is going to be snappier. As a result, try and find what you want to emphasize. If you're looking to emphasize the head, then either turn the head before everything else or turn it after everything else, but don't have it come with everything else. The kids who get special attention are the ones who run ahead, or the ones who dawdle behind, okay? So if you've got kids running to the escalator, the teacher's going to yell at them, hey, kids, stop running. Or if you have kids back there checking out the ladies' underwear in the department store, the teacher's going to say, hey, kids, come on, let's go. The kids all around the teacher, not going to matter. Same with your animation. Okay, the body parts that arrive at generally the same time are not going to cause any, they're not going to cause you to notice them as much as the thing that comes late or the thing that comes early. You know what I mean? 
So think about ways to phrase your motion in such a way to draw emphasis to the thing that's important. And this requires you to think through the scene, of course. You have to think, well, what's important to look at here? You can't just pick, well, I think the left ear is important this time and just try and make that work. Well, that's the right ear, sorry. Well, think through it. Understand what you're trying to do. Become a professional about this animation thing. Dig into the processes and into the mechanics of things and into the motivations of things. And then whatever you need to emphasize for that scene. And every scene's different. There is no rule about, well, the hand's always... No, it may not be. It may be the foot. All depends on the story. And if you're in a scene and, and you're in a handoff and your director says, well, I want you to do this shot, ask him, well, what's the star of the shot? Well, what do you mean? Well, is this character? What about this character? What do you really want to see? And a good director will understand what you're asking, and he'll give you that information. And then you do what you need to do to draw stuff out by using offsets to add emphasis and to draw the viewer's eye to the things that are important. So anyways, that's enough talking about it. Let's show you some stuff, okay? Sounds good. Okay, I have here an uh, old man character. He has uh, an A pose, a B pose, and there's a breakdown in here. Select the whole body and you see the breakdown key right down there. And so this is just a typical key breakdown to define the arc for the hand, for the neck, for some weight, and then a last key. Now what we want to talk about here is, is illustrating some of the things I've talked about in the offsets lecture. Um, you want to, let's say we want to take this hand right here 